Welcome to Secure Management Faculties, where your mind is key before you unlock what is seen. Secure Agent Dreyfus. All right, today's video, I'm going to make it as fast as possible. Extra, extra tasks that need to be done. But today we're going to be talking about deterioration of craft. And this is the work, the craft, the profession, whatever it is that you specialize in, that the craft itself can be debilitating, not necessarily because the environment's bad, but because the work conditions, as far as the work existing in your life is bad. So we'll chime into that. But as usual, below, you can find a sell your guns tab. If you want to make some extra currency, click the sell your guns tab to make some extra money, some extra funds. If you have an extra firearm you don't want, follow the prompts, fill out the paperwork as a stand on this channel in present time until further seen or otherwise. Now, I wanted to jump straight into the fact that um, first, we're going to use a story right about the a deterioration of craft that I had in my experience. And then after that, we'll follow up with some um, um, supporting lessons, if you will, uh, in depth as usual, and then just knocking it out in the, in the video. So I wanted to talk about what it means to um, be in a state of a deteriorated craft under this explanation or this story, like I just said. I was working at, um, at I call it account security when you're working on minority, minority security. And at the beginning, if you're working in security protection, you have a certain amount of scopes you can go through. And one of the big scopes that you uh, go through is from the private sector, as you would call it, depending if you work in governmental or not. So as you're being in a private sector, you want to understand that when you work in minority security, it is basically the most basic form of security you can work in modern day time. You'll find many multiple names. It'd be Larry Security Guard or Larry or, or, or Gerald Security Plus. It could be any name that you could think of that simply comes off of the top of the brain that minority security companies can be started with, especially here in Michigan, since um, there's really no um, standing criteria for you to have like a guard card or something like that. But even then, minority security is just pretty much simply easy to create. It's, it's more or less easy to get hired and the pay is usually low. And especially at the point in time when I was working this minority security, I was making uh, approximately uh, around what, seven, eight dollars an hour at this time. But it was the beginning of the beginning. And at that point, and even now in your youth, right, you got the time to burn to build. So just um, uh, acknowledging that I was working a post, if you can call it that, but I was just pretty much working a job at this point. And I can't remember the complex. It was obviously a, a bad neighborhood complex. It had a lot of fighting and drug activity and things like this in this nature. And they wanted to have a security deterrent. But the thing about minority security is that when you have minority security as um, your forefront right without with with lower standards that means lower gear as far as uniform equipment and also presentation i want you to imagine the security guards right that wear uh, a completely blouse too big shirt like three four sizes over or something like that or the texture of the shirt doesn't match the texture of the pants it'd be like a uh, a polyester bottom and then you know a silk top or something like that and not not saying it's that far but i have to describe it in that manner to get the point across of course we can throw in the red patches no arm no credentials pretty much nothing but train it about observing and recording your environment and you get stuck at a post or you get stuck at a position and you're simply there with post orders that may not be the way they need to be. So now that that introduction is pretty much filtered out, anyway, long story short, I was working with a, a partner and that partner, me and that partner, our direct order at that time per the client that came through our sergeant at that time, but at that time, military ranks are fickle. So let's just call him the supervisor at this point. The rule was simply rots the front patrol the hallways through like one through five, right? And they were straight linear hallways. 
And don't let nobody in that's not supposed to be in. Everybody's supposed to have a key card. Now, the problem about this is we still got the bad uniforms that are, are arguably not the right size, color and texture's wrong, um, and red patches, and just simply they're, simply they're just as security guards. And the biggest problem about that is that um, the client wanted our presentation and wanted our training and wanted us to be that way. Friendly old neighborhood jolly security guards named Jeff and named Ronnie, if you will. Even though my name was, wasn't Ronnie, but the perspective is set there. So we were told not to let nobody in. But the point is, in actual reality, we had to let people in. Because the fact of the matter is, you had people that forgot their key cards, and as they forgot their key cards, um, we would note some of them that exited the facility, but then they'd come back and then say, hey, I forgot my card, because they had some sort of swipe system. But there were others that we couldn't verify. So when it was time to check the post orders or you know the job orders, the job orders were completely expired at the time. And not only the job orders were expired, the paper had a brownish effect, wrinkle effect, and the year was at least five to seven years old. And so at this point, that means that the supervisory process never updated these these uh, client orders or these post orders. And at the same time, we're talking about being in a condition of being mixed placed because the orders say don't let nobody in that's not supposed to be in, but we don't even have a list about who's supposed to be in and who's not supposed to be in. Not to mention people were coming down from their residence and they were letting people in. So that means that even if we don't let people in, we still, there's a loophole for them to go around this issue and have somebody that's in there to let them in, even if they're not even associated with where they're going. It can be somebody three doors down and they're going to room five and the other person is at room seven or room 10. It, it, like it, the, the concept just didn't make sense. It didn't match up with the mission. And so long story short, we get a, a gentleman at this time when I was working this and he knocks rampantly and aggressively on the door. Boom, 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 boom. And his, his words were more or less like, hey, you need to let me the fuck in. And then so this is really when you define your job uh, credential, if you will. And this is where you define uh, the conditions which make your employment feasible. So now the guy's knocking on the door. Boom, boom, boom. Let me in. Let me in. And so my partner gets up and he makes the choice to let him in. And so the guy, he comes over at the time. And obviously, he had a, a real aggressive experience. It looked like life ran him through. And everything about him was trapping underground and dirty. But the fact of the matter is, he pulled us to the side, not to mention smelling like a pleat marijuana as a usual expectancy from those type of environments. No discrimination against that. But sadly, it's more or less a truth to uh, the stereotype that's befitting in most cases. But the fact of the matter is the gentleman says, hey, basically he pulled it to the side. He said, when you see me at that motherfucking door, you let me in because they know who I am. And I later found out who he was talking about. He was talking about building management, right? And so basically this is suggesting that this man who possibly may have been doing illegal things possibly may have special treatment from the client or management. And so we get an aggressive call to follow up. Like you're, you're supposed to let certain people in, which this wasn't really described to us in the first place, but you got to listen to the supervisory action at that point, especially when you're working under the conditions and you sort of need the money at the beginning. Right. You don't want nothing taking the money out of your pot. And so basically the gentleman in a long time, uh, 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 the gentleman basically invited us to his room, which I think was uh, floor four or something like that. It had to be like a room. Uh, maybe it was uh, 15 or something. But anyway, still down the linear hallways. And so. Uh, um, I could have been more uh, uh, particular about the exact experience and expression, but we get up to the room after we're doing our patrol because we were walking in teams, basically. We never walked separated. And so we got to his room and 
my partner was looking at me with a, an expression like, you think we should stop by? And of course, it's like a no, why would we stop by? And he was uh, listening to some real hardcore old school rap. And the rap was was themed like it in uh, viewers uh, discretion advised. It basically was like pump a nigga, snap a nigga, shoot a nigga, those things, if you will. Channel has to be authentic, so you're gonna have to forgive the forgive the n word. But the concept is not only he had the aggression of appearance, he had the environment to match which was a complete metamorphosis of death, if you ask me. And me and my partner gazed at each other at the time, which was short term. And he said, we got to get the fuck off this post. And I said, yeah, I'm not going to be working here too much longer either. So the story was a little bit sloppy, a little bit ran together, but I had to tell it in that way. Um, there was some uh, 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 cinematic details as far as emotion left out, but... It has to be done this way. The video is uh, well over its time frame, but I'm going to get into the lesson real quick to talk about deterioration of craft. Now, deterioration of craft and the environment, we're talking about the rule setting to guide the posts that are that is sternly placed in application for you to perform your security duties as a security professional. The post orders plus the client did not match up with the rules that need to be set. There were specialized special applications that were favored that were not listed. We did not have the proper equipment or uniform e or even the training to support what we wanted to do. Now, there was nothing deteriorating about someone directly applying it to us because the environment is the application that you work in but it was a passive deterioration towards the the craft because the the natural rules and the circumstances that are accepted that allow us to be deteriorated as far as our skill equipment and also uh, how we engage with people i've worked with people that didn't have a layer of use of force and they went straight to fist fighting. I've worked with people that didn't have a, a, a concept of what is in the security and law enforcement field, what is called verbal judo. They didn't have a concept of a negotiation and that's because the training was on development and the person becomes undeveloped, especially when they're not taking the initiative to develop on their own by taking responsibility for their craft, but it's inherently not their fault. What makes the environment deteriorated is the fact that it's naturally passive, passively designed and suggestive by not only the employees and the staff and even the written rules, it suggests that you have to perform and be at this specific criteria, even though Fundamentally, in real life, they will argue you down and come after you and have you and be demanded of you to have a higher expectation of expectancy and presentation of yourself and skill, but then simply not providing it. So basically, the video is about deterioration of craft passively, deterioration of craft passively by the environment, not necessarily about others directly doing it or manipulating doing it, just simply the conditions. The lesson is clear. As soon as you get the opportunity to find a productive environment, such as with a control center, a dispatch, or actually rules that are set with um, even a simple a code of integrity, things like this is what makes up the craft of the work. And it also initially affects every worker and the conditions and the items that are in that environment to be productive and better. Secure management faculties where your mind is key before you unlock what is seen. Secure Agent Dreyfus, I appreciate everybody who's tuned in, who's been tuning in. And uh, thank you for looking at this B-Log video. I forget they can be all natural um, because I've been uh, actually preferring, preferring to edit a lot more. 
at least uh, edit or and, and or record from my past videos. So, you know, it's just like, oh, yeah, this video is a vlog. So I can have lapsed times and things of this nature. But I like to keep a certain time frame. But anyway, I digress. Discard that. Again, if you need to sell your firearm, click below. Hit the sell your guns link. Don't need to explain it. Fill out the paperwork. Sign an office in your gun makes that extra currency. I'll see you on the next upload. And once again, appreciate the viewers that do come. And leave a comment down below. Like if you wish. I prefer if you leave a comment. If not, then let's just keep this, uh, this machine on moving. Appreciate it. And see you on the next upload and the next topic.